diversity. You can overcome disagreements. Uh, he had Democrats speak on his half. He had an African-American football player talk about the unlikely friendship between him and, and John McCain. He had Joe Biden get up there and speak, one of his longtime rivals who was also one of his dearest friends. Why do you think John McCain chose you to be a pallbearer? Listen to this. Well, first of all, it's, it's a deeply personal but also very heartbreaking uh, honor to, to, to be able to do this. But I think it's uh, it's actually very symbolic that one of the pallbearers for Senator John McCain will be a Russian citizen because, uh, you know, one of the biggest lies that has been propagated by Vladimir Putin's regime and by the official Kremlin propaganda machine against Senator John McCain for many, many years, including in these last few days when I have been reporting on his death, was that John McCain was somehow an enemy of Russia. Nothing could be further from the truth. Right. Senator John McCain was never an enemy of Russia or right. the people of Russia. He was an enemy, a committed and passionate enemy of the kleptocrats, the right. crooks, right. and the criminals that are sitting in the Kremlin, that are, that are around Vladimir Putin and, and in senior positions in his regime. He called them what they deserve to be called. He called them liars. He called them thieves. He called them murderers, you know, because they're the people who are stealing right. from the citizens of Russia and denying right. the most basic rights and freedoms of the citizens of Russia, the, the innate human dignity of the citizens of Russia that right. Senator John McCain so, so passionately believed in, but he was never an enemy of the Russian people. And in fact, I can tell you, as somebody who has been involved for many years in the pro-democracy movement in Russia, that uh, we had no bigger and no more committed supporter uh, in the United States, or in fact in the Western world in general, than Senator John McCain. However busy he was, however many things he had on his hands as a United States Senator, he always found time to publicly speak out and support the rights and the freedoms of, of the citizens of Russia. He right. engaged in public advocacy on behalf of Russian political prisoners. He led the way for the Magnitsky legislation in the United States, which right. was a law uh, passed a few years ago that introduced targeted personal sanctions, not against Russia as a country or against the people of Russia, but against specific individuals. Against the thugs. And the oligarchs of the Putin regime. Right. Who are engaged in corruption and human rights abuse. And Boris Nemtsov, the late leader of the Russian opposition, who was, who was a friend of Senator McCain's, called it the most pro-Russian law ever passed in a foreign country because it holds to account the people who are abusing the rights of Russian citizens. And this would not have happened without Senator John McCain. And what did he mean to you personally? Well, he was, he was just a pillar of strength and support and truth, you know. I, it's, I, I find it difficult to even find words because, you know, for, for so many years, those of us who are living in, in countries with authoritarian and tyrannical and kleptocratic regimes have got so used uh, to so many Western political leaders who are paying lip service to such things as human rights, democracy, freedoms, dignity. You know, they make nice speeches, they say nice words, but then they're perfectly able to cut deals or to, to do business with our tyrants and our kleptocrats yes, and, our, yes. and our authoritarian rulers uh, do business Preach it, brother. and sometimes even literally. You know, Senator McCain was somebody who had none of this. Who right. Who always spoke the truth. Right. However inconvenient. He didn't sell us he out. He was one of those very few, very rare political leaders in the Western world who began to speak the truth about Vladimir Putin and his regime uh, very early on and very publicly and very yes, passionately. Yes, he did. You know, what everybody is now saying about Vladimir Putin today, in 2018, he began to say as early as the year 2000, that Putin just came to power. In fact, the first time he, he sounded a public warning about Putin's coming authoritarianism was at the Republican presidential debate against George W. Bush in South Carolina. In February of 2000, this was six weeks into Vladimir Putin's rule, uh, when uh, the first time he sounded a public warning about Putin's aggressive designs on the world stage was in the 2008 election debate against Senator Barack Obama when he said that one of the next targets, the main target of Putin's regime would be Ukraine. This was six years before Putin attacked Ukraine and annexed Crimea. So and then it happened. Senator McCain never shied away from, from speaking the truth and standing up for what he believed was right, which is, you know, unfortunately a very rare thing in the political world today. And he very famously said when he looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes, he saw a KGB officer. Yeah, absolutely. It was everything that Vladimir Putin did, both domestically and on the world stage. And by the way, Senator McCain perfectly understood the direct relationship between Putin's domestic authoritarianism and his aggressive designs in the world. Everything that Putin did offended Senator McCain. It was against, it went against his values, his, his core beliefs. And, and uh, you know, he was, again, it's one of the biggest lies that he was, he was somehow anti-Russian. He was, he was one of the truest and biggest friends of the Russian people on the world stage because he refused to, to, uh, to ignore uh, the abuses and, and the human rights violations and the corruption that the Putin regime uh, is, is instigating on the Russian people. He right. the truth. 
He would always support us, and over the many years, the doors of his office on Capitol Hill were always open. Always. For those of us who advocated for freedom and democracy and human dignity in Russia. Dana, you write today about John McCain. McCain's years as a prisoner of war gave him a righteousness perhaps nobody can match. He never forgot that political opponents are not his enemies and that there are things more important than winning elections. Yeah, I, I think there is nobody uh, like uh, John McCain in our politics today. I think he was a throwback uh, to another era. And part of that is just the accident of having spent those uh, five years uh, at the Hanoi Hilton. When you've been a prisoner of war, when you've seen uh, the enemy, an enemy uh, he forgave over time, but you realize the guy on the other side of the aisle isn't your enemy. He's, a, he's a, an, a, your opponent, a fellow American. Uh, you can work together, and I think even more importantly than that is the courage that you often saw. McCain would do things that were not politically uh, popular right up uh, uh, until the very end, uh, and I think he did that because he saw actual danger in his life, uh, and he realized that, you know what, if I, if I lose a vote or I lose an election because of this, that's not the end of the world, and I think that gave him an enormous power, uh, a power that you... Uh, virtually do not see in our politics today. What did you think of those who got up to speak um, about him today in the Capitol Rotunda? Uh, I, I think every, everybody was of one voice, of one mind. You don't often uh, see that. Uh, I think uh, Paul Ryan was absolutely right in uh, talking about uh, the bravery. Uh, and it, it uh, McCain, uh, you know, it, it, towards the very end, I think antagonized uh, some of his fellow conservatives in the in, in the Trump uh, wing. But that's uh, more that wasn't a change in John McCain. Uh, John McCain was the same. You know, man, John McCain uh, was John McCain. Uh, following twenty years ago on the Straight Talk <coughs> right. Express. In fact, I dug out my uh, Straight Talk Express T-shirt. I'm going to put that on when we're done and head over. Uh, to pay my respects like uh, Americans of all political views will be doing today in the rotunda. Good luck, Dana, and good luck, Vladimir. We appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. And we will be right back. That's why we're honored. I love my grandma. Such of a great As you man grow older, today. Your brain because he deserved the worthiness of our respect of his goals and his courageousness that he was willing to sacrifice for you, for I, and for everyone else throughout the planet who believes in a free, open, fair democracy. That is the reason why we're making a big deal out of his loss. He will be missed. He will truly be missed.